when we come to this, this high discipline of Christ and Him crucified, and we see that what He's done for us on the cross, our obedience will flow. If the gospel is presented correctly, our obedience and love for God will, will flow out of knowledge of this gospel. And, and we will desire to please Him in the strength of His might because of His love for us and what He's done for us. People who hold low views of God, they destroy the gospel for all who hold them. Low conceptions of deity destroy the gospel for all who hold them. That's why I want to tell you about who God is, what He's like. So He's inscrutable, He's effable, He's uncomprehensible, He's unfathomable, He's, uh, he's uh, faithful, He's loving, He's merciful, He's just. He's the, the, the just, righteous judge of the earth. He, 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 and He's holy. Um, he's gracious. What is grace? Grace is me getting what I don't deserve. Uh, mercy is me not getting what I do deserve. God is merciful. But He can be moved to wrath. Can you imagine the, the wrath that I would be deserving of were I to spurn the cross of Christ and the, that redemption that He offers me? It costs God quite a bit to, 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 we will never know probably what it costs God to redeem us. But He is my Redeemer, and if you're saved, He's your Redeemer too. Back in the day, the Israelites, um, if, if, if my friend here went into poverty and was unable to take care of his family, he could go and sell himself to somebody who had money and, and sell himself into slavery so he could provide for his family. And then this boss, new boss of his, he had to work for 50 years or, or the remainder up to the Jubilee, year of Jubilee when they, they were all released. And, and so, but this was a blessing back in the day because, because now he, he, his family wasn't going to die. And so he could, another family member of his, uh, which is called the, como se dice en inglés, called the, uh, the, kinsman, uh, the, the kinsman redeemer. So it would be a close relative of his that had money could come and buy him back buy him and his family back from that other owner and then he would redeem him back out of that slavery, out of that oppression. And so Christ comes and he redeems us from the curse of the law. He redeems us out of the kingdom of darkness and conveys us into the kingdom of the love of his son. And that's why he's our redeemer. That's why on the cross he said, it is finished. He paid the price, the full price. He, 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 he drank in the full wrath of God that we deserved in our behalf as, our, as, our, as a substitutionary death. He took what we deserve and gives us what we don't deserve. His righteousness. He imputes that into our account. And so, it, can you imagine the wrath that I would be deserving should I spurn the blood of Christ? Should I spurn the blood of Christ and, and just and treat it as a as a as a profane thing? I would be worth I would be due some heavy wrath, some serious wrath, and I justly deserve it. God is just. He 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 says that right here. He says that. Um. He says that. Let me see. Do, do, do. He says, "I, the Lord, search the heart." I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Scripture says that God will not be mocked. You will reap what you sow. If you sow to the Spirit, you reap life. If you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. God is just. He's, we're, nobody's going to escape. We might want to entertain ourselves and, and go into this escapism and make a bunch of imitation or imaginary friends around us and, and just get lost into, into uh, nothingness and, and, and just deceive ourselves and be an ostrich, sticking our head in the sand, not willing to face reality. But that, that's called escapism. And it's an ism. I look around where I'm standing and I ask the Lord, I'm like, what is going on here? I don't understand it. I've never seen that type of behavior before. But that's an extreme, that's an extreme uh, example of, of that type of behavior, that escapism, that, that just unwillingness to face reality. Probably due to trauma and pain in the life. I get it. I understand. Um, but, but 
all of, uh, all of us, we tend to do that in, in, a, in, a, in a type of way. Uh, we all tend to, rather than face reality, the truth. Because man, a fallen man hates the truth because it exposes the lie that he believes about himself and reality and the lie about God that he believes. That's why man doesn't read the Bible. Man hates the Bible because it ex it's a mirror. It's, it's the truth of God's Word. And that's why people don't read it. They won't read it because they hate the truth because it exposes the lie that the lies that they believe. You know, man hates God. Fallen man hates God. Why? Because it, it, he, he innately he hates God. He wants to be God. That's why these false religions, these false religions, they prevail is because they satisfy the fallen nature of man. They want to make God a debtor to themselves. Somehow tip the balances, uh, the cosmic balances of, oh well, I'm, I'm doing, I've done a lot better good than I did bad. Well, that's that's to our, that's your opinion that you did better, more good than bad. What's God's opinion? That's what matters. It only took one sin for God to kick Adam and Eve out of the garden. One sin. So how in the world could I ever think that I'm able to tip the balances back into my favor by doing good works? It's impossible. It's ludicrous. It's, it's not in touch with reality. We will never be able to earn our way into heaven. Never. Never. It's impossible. And a lot of people, they, 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 when you look at the moralist, right? The moralist says, well, I'm sure a lot better than that tax collector over there because I'm a pretty good guy. Am I? God says he tests the minds and hearts of man. If you were to put some of your guys' thoughts up on a TV screen here, right? If you were to do that, what, 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 would you want to stick around in the room? Probably not, right? So God tests the minds. Hey, buddy. Um, God tests the minds. Is that, that's a, that's, that should be a, a great thought if, we, if we're bringing every thought into captivity to obedience of Christ. Think about that. God reads every thought. We, he's very interested in us. He abides in eternity. So He can sit there and spend your whole life with you. And He does it to every human being on the planet. Everyone that's ever even been on the planet. He spends their entire life with them watching. He's omniscient he knows everything instantly without any effort god doesn't look down the corridors of time to see who would who would accept him as lord and then save them no god knows everything instantly without effort he knows all of our thoughts he knows our words before they even come out of our mouth and and this is important to know this is my friend that i can i tell him about when we were locked up buddy so this is my friend. We were in jail together. Great big guy, 300 and some pounds. When he came in, I was scared to death of him. I was like, oh, no. Right? And, uh, right? Well, no, but I'm, I'm telling him about how, how when, when I had you read the newspaper and then I had you read the Bible and then some of the things... Well, I was fasting and praying for him one day. And, 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 I, and I don't say that for anybody to think that I'm something because I don't seek human approval. Those who seek human approval cannot believe in God according to Scripture. It says, if you, if you, uh, how is it that you can believe? Jesus told the Pharisees, how is it that you can believe if you seek glory that comes from man and not the glory that comes from God? A.W. Tozer says, so if I understand this text correctly, if I seek human approval, I don't believe in God. So having the approval of the Lord... I don't care about human approval. That's why I'll sit up here and tell you about hell and sin and things you don't want to hear because I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to tell you the truth. So my friend here, uh, all of a sudden I was fasting and crying out to God for him and a love came over me so violent, so intense that, that I, I, I had to say, Father, please stop. It was so violent. It was, uh, it was just, the only way I could describe it because there are no words to describe his love for us is... Ugh, God, I love this guy. And I was scared to death of him. I didn't want him in my cell. He was 300 pounds, six, seven. You know, I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> I love him. He's, my, he's a good friend of mine now. But, but so God is love. He, he is he's, he's omniscient. What that means is all-knowing, all science. He knows all things instantly without effort. He's all-powerful, meaning there's no limit to his power. No limit to his knowledge. 
no limit to him at all. None. That's why space, when we look at space, it's in our finite minds, it's, and it gives us an idea of infinite, uh, infinite, infinity, excuse me. It, that's why space is there, so that, because all creation speaks eloquently of its creator. When we look at space, we can say, wow, God is infinite. Did you know that if, if, if you stretched a, a tape measure across the universe and the gravitational pull was one inch off, all the worlds would implode and we, there wouldn't be life. Did you know that if the moon was a little bit further or a little bit away from the, the, the earth, it, it, the, the continents would be flat?